All right, golfers, we're gonna talk about in-season versus off-season. Now, you're just starting to come into months where it's starting to warm up, snow's starting to melt, which means we can get outside and play. Now, what that means is we need to start moving away from this and we want to start moving towards this. If you continue being golfer number one while trying to play the game of golf, you're gonna battle this season. So, it's time to play, which means our range sessions need to look just a little bit different. We need to start incorporating some skill building and not just technique. Now I'm not saying technique isn't important, we still need to work on that and maintain that, but we wanna sprinkle in just a little bit of skill training to get you ready for the golf course. So ultimately, we wanna take our range game to the golf course. So far in the off season, you've been just working on technique. And as you know, when you go out to play golf, Technique is important, yes, but the golf course also provides you with unique challenges. Having to hit the ball low, having to hit the ball high, having to hit the ball left, having to hit the ball right. You get the story. The golf course doesn't just give us seven iron after seven iron. We have to change club every shot. We have to factor in wind. There are many, many environments that we need to take into consideration when we're on the golf course, which means when we're on the driving range or on the chipping green or on the putting green, we need to practice the scenarios that we're going to get on the golf course. So let me introduce you to the rule of thirds. Now the rule of thirds goes like this. Let's say you've got one hour to practice. Well, what we want to do in that one hour of time is split up that one hour into 20 minute intervals. 20 minutes working on technique, 20 minutes working on random practice, and 20 minutes working on competitive practice. So let's go into this a little bit further. Your technique practice is your drills you're working on something specific in your swing. Your coach has given you the drills to do, you're gonna do them slowly, you're gonna fully understand them. We're gonna spend 20 minutes doing just that. You might not need a target for this, you might not even need to hit too many golf balls doing this, but you're solely going to be focused on making new movements. Then we move into random practice, which of course is changing distances, changing golf clubs. We're making everything we do quite random. We might even take some time between shots. We're trying to replicate the golf course just a little bit. And then we've got competitive practice. This is where a lot of golfers miss. Competitive practice is usually with one golf ball. So let's say we're on the short game area and we've been chipping from the same spot over and over and over again. Then we move into random practice where you're throwing say nine or 10 golf balls around the green, trying to chip them nice and close to the hole. But competitive practice would be using one golf ball and actually having a score attached to the drill you're doing. During competitive practice, you wanna test yourself and you might wanna benchmark your scores for future practice sessions. That way you know that if the skills you're working on during your technique and random practice, you'll know that you're getting better if you continue doing the competitive practice. Now, now I know what you're thinking. Ryan, how do I know what drills and games to do? I got you covered here. So a guy, let's just say it was me, kind of created a performance practice ebook. So in this ebook, I have 40 performance games, full swing, short game, putting, and on course, as well as a scoring book so that you can track all your practice in one spot. What, what's that? You, where, where can you get it? Top right corner, my website's on there. You can go grab a copy for yourself. So that's what I'd recommend for your practice moving forward. You've been inside for so long, it's been snowing, it's been icy, and now you're outside. So we need to test all those swing changes you've been making inside. We now need to test them outside. The second thing you're going to need to do, you're gonna to need to manage your expectations. So think about it. You've just come from being inside for three, six, maybe nine months, and you've been hitting balls solely into either a net or you've been to a simulator, but really you haven't seen ball flight for some time. You've more or less been working on technique this entire time as well. 
Now all of a sudden you've been asked to go outside, you're now gonna hit off real grass, you might be battling some wind, and one of the most important things is you're now going to be seeing the ball flight. Now I know what ball flight does to a lot of golfers. We start to look at the ball flight and we react. We tend to move a little bit more around our ball flight. So if you're trying to move into say a draw pattern and you see the ball slicing, you might find it a little bit tough to commit to those changes. So like I said, manage your expectations might be a bit difficult at the start. Now let's talk about playing the game. Your first few games might not yield the results you're looking for. Then again, I might be wrong. All those swing changes you made might all come together and you have the best game of your life. But just be aware that you haven't been out on the golf course just yet to test those new swing changes. You might feel an added amount of pressure when you're out there on the golf course. And that's why I say, go to the driving range, move a little bit more away from the technical side and start to learn skills, start to work on your skills. Don't be frozen over the golf ball thinking about your takeaway or your top position. Start to free yourself up. Now you might be thinking, haven't I just spent the whole entire off season making these changes so that I can play better? While making changes in the off season is important, one thing that golfers miss is the fact that you need to apply those changes under pressure before you make them more autonomous. Which is why going onto the driving range, doing your random practice, doing your competitive practice, and making sure you're getting on course so that you can place those swing changes under just a little bit of pressure. So, so far, you've gone out to practice. You've changed your practice up a little bit. It's no longer just technique. You're aware of the expectations you need to take into your first round of golf. Once you play that first round of golf, how do we know what we need to improve on? This brings me to my third point, using your round of golf to determine what you need to work on next. Now, if you're someone who doesn't take stats, that's perfectly okay but I just wanna make you aware of something. If you're not tracking some kind of stats, you're basically letting emotions dictate what you need to practice. Having stats right in front of you gives you cold hard facts and doesn't allow your emotions to get in the way. Although you might not feel you hit driver well today, your stats might suggest otherwise. Now, however you're going to track your progress during your rounds of golf, we wanna make sure we're hitting the low hanging fruit. So what do I mean by that? Well, in the off season, you've been working heavily on your technique. But when we get out on the golf course, we might be making some simple mistakes. Little things like three putts, missing the green with your chip shots, having penalty shots. All of these mistakes are low hanging fruits. It's pretty simple to stop your three putts. It's easy not to chip twice, and it's even easier not to have penalty shots. Making sure that you're aware of these low hanging fruits can be a really good way to lower your scores. Now, once you've played five to 10 rounds of golf, your stats are going to clearly show you the areas you need to improve. Now you can use your time on the range far more effectively. Rather than thinking it's always swing technique, you can start to target different distances. Maybe you're not as good as you thought you were inside 50 to 100 yards. Maybe you need to work on your driver. Maybe you're not hitting shots close enough and that's why you're struggling with your putting. Again, stats are going to show you this stuff. And I'm not saying you have to take stats. All I'm saying is if you don't, you are going to be a little bit more emotional when you come off that golf course you might be working on the wrong things. So to cut a long story short, make sure you're devoting your time to your technical development. Ensure you're working on those low hanging fruits that can drop your score pretty quickly. And use those stats that you've collected to make sure that you're working on what you need to for the long term. So finally, let's do a little bit of a summary about this. You're, you're now in season. Time for working solely on technique is over. It's time to play the game. So number one, we want to move our thoughts from technique only into building skills and playing the game of golf. Number two, we want to practice more effectively. Use the rule of thirds. Don't just work on the technical elements of the golf swing. Make sure you're working on some skills as well. Number three, manage your expectations. Early on, it might take you a few rounds just to get used to everything. Remember, you've been inside for about six months. It's going to take a few rounds to find your feet again. Number four, try and track your progress using some kind of stats. It'll help you work out what you need to work on as opposed to what you want to work on. Just remember, don't let your emotions get in the way. Make sure you're working on the right things. And finally, if you're struggling to do this on your own, I'm more than happy to help you. Enjoy the good weather outside. Happy golfing.